everyone. I am thrilled to be here today to explore the captivating world of Leadership 2.0. And this one's through a very unique vantage point, a lens of a senior product manager. Buckle up as we navigate the intricacies of product development and team leadership in this ever-evolving tech landscape. So, a quick introduction about me. My name is Tanvi Mishra, and I work as a senior product manager at Amazon. I've been working with Amazon for over almost seven years, and I have worked on a range of different products from Amazon launches in Netherlands, Sweden, and Poland, and now working with Amazon Freight. So, uh, what does exactly a product manager do, or how do they drive success? I think it's a combination of a couple of key responsibilities, number one being strategy. Product managers are the architects of strategic initiatives. They steer the product towards alignment with business goals. They specialize in the ability to envision the future landscape, understand what the customer needs, and formulate winning strategies. The second one is vision. The product leader acts as the torchbearer of the product's long-term vision, this entails not only foreseeing industry trends, but also inspiring teams to innovate and constantly create products that stand the test of time. Roadmap planning is the third one. Crafting a roadmap is the key to chartering a course through uncharted waters. Product managers create a strategic plan or roadmap for the development of evolution of products over time. This roadmap outlines enhancements, milestones, and that all of these steps are being done by the product team to aim and achieve the key metrics of any product development. Stakeholder management is the fourth and the key important part of actually delivering any kind of product. Successful product leaders recognize that any product success is a result of actually successful partnerships with diverse stakeholders. Effective communication, collaboration, and negotiation skills are vital to navigate this intricate web of relationships. So, what does a product development look like? In my view, there are essentially seven phases. The first one being idea generation. At this stage, creative collaboration and identification of potential concepts are looked at. What can be an ideal solution? What does the customer want? What can we look at? And everyone comes together to identify what can be the right product. Then comes the second step, which is market research. This step is essentially an in-depth analysis to validate market needs and assess competition. This is identifying different customer touch points. What are the pain points? What does a customer lack in the current experience that can be potentially implemented by the product team? The, fourth, the third one is conceptualization. This is defining a very, very clear and a detailed product concept, and it is supposed to be based on research insights that was done at the market research stage. Here, you define minute and smaller parts of the product. For example, a product needs to be red in color because the preference of the customers was supposedly in the red and the orange phase. So this is defining deeper concept and requirements. The next one is design and planning. The, at this stage, you develop a comprehensive plan outlining the product features, the architecture, and the development roadmap. Then comes prototyping which is creating a preliminary version of the product for testing and validation. This can be a very uh, initial phase of the product, can be, if it's a digital product, can be in gamma phases, can be in beta phases to identify, is the prototype working fine? Is it supposed to go absolutely as is in production and identifying issues with your product ahead of time? Then there is testing and refinement. Via the product and the prototype testing, you go back, identify, uh, test the multiple facets that you've designed, uh, do rigorous evaluation, identify processes to, to, to feed in the user feedback incorporation, and then uh, from a forward-looking roadmap, you refine the product. And then comes the final step, which is the launch and the post-launch monitoring. At this stage, when you're launching, you introduce the product to the market. But 
the most important part is actually monitoring its performance even after launch and ensuring that this performance leads to further improvements or development strategies to ensure success as an organization. My topic, which is Leadership 2.0, what are the traits for success here? I think as a product manager, there are a couple of key things that you need to be very, very successful at. The first one is visionary thinking. The ability to anticipate the marketing trends, vision of product managers, uh, vision of what the landscapes are going to be, and the, and, and the ability to guide teams towards innovation is going to be very, very important. The second one is adaptability. Embracing change and swiftly adapting and adjusting existing strategies to ensure success in the long run. It is imperative to thrive in this dynamic tech environment. Imagine how many products have become obsolete, how many products have uh, changed, the requirements of the customers have changed. Imagine the whole boom of technology at this age. The next one is communication. Clear and effective communication to articulate vision, strategy, expectations, fostering collaboration across team is imperative here. The vision, the documentation cannot be just in your head. It needs to be a part of everyone's brain, everyone's collaboration, whoever is participating in this journey. Then comes the next part, which is a special one for me, which is empathy. Uh, as a product manager, if you come with empathy, understanding the customer needs and understanding what their pain points are become easier. Also, you become a winner in the team dynamics. Understanding the market nuances and driving products to resonate with users to actually develop truly a winning product becomes easier. So empathy definitely is the key. Now, the challenges of developing uh, and managing product life cycles. Uh, I think in my view, there are three key challenges. The first one being communication challenges. Communication challenges can happen between multiple stakeholders because there are a lot of stakeholders in this journey. Developing teams, key stakeholders like leadership, cross, uh, cross-functional cross teams can be a big challenge. Then the second one is time and pressures. Uh, while everyone has the time to develop the product, uh, we also need to balance the need for speedy development and ensuring that the quality of the product is what it is supposed to be and at the same time that the customers actually require the solution while you can develop an amazing product 10 years down the line but the customer that do they really need it also the fact that you might not have the luxury of everything tech from uh, tech investment at your luxury uh, in your organization so you need to balance out uh, time timeline pressures are often at crunch resource allocations Efficient uh, efficiency and managing resources is one of the key challenges that I go through as a product manager. Uh, managing conflicting priorities within the team can be absolutely com uh, complex. Strategies that I use often to overcome these challenges are collaborative tools. For example, uh, using Asana, Slack, Confluence to bring everyone together in the team and define clear timelines, define clear ownership, uh, doing product tracking, documentation on, on an ongoing basis becomes imperative to not just keep a track for yourself, but communicate to the stakeholders on what is happening. The second one is agile methodologies. Embracing agile methodologies like Scrum promotes iterative development, adaptability, and continuous improvement. Then fostering a culture of innovation. Uh, product development and product launches is not a one-time thing. I think it's a culture that is important. So cultivating an environment that encourages creativity, problem solving, is crucial for sustained development of not just yourself, but your team. Like any other team uh, in Amazon, what I've learned is the classic uh, two pizza team in, in which there is a smaller team uh, and these are key contributors that are absolutely required to deliver a successful product. And uh, it is enough to share uh, two pizzas within the team and everyone has their appetite saturated, but at the same time, it is successful uh, 
uh, timeline driven and it is also ensured uh, to reduce any kind of bureaucracy that ha- that can potentially happen uh, in the process it is a very very common concept in amazon then uh, as a product manager uh, developing teams and managing development roadmaps can be absolutely tricky in this case if you see uh, there are three key uh, challenges that i always all, always come across and um, uh, and and i use key strategies to always come back and get my anchor back to my journey uh, i think it starts with business impact assessment often when product managers are confused as to what to look at what to prioritize uh, it is necessary to evaluate whether the product and its features have the potential to drive the key goals for business for example it can be revenue it can be growth it can be any kind of custom account it can be profits depending on what the business is actually aimed at the product should deliver in line with that the second one is strategic alignment so ensuring that the product roadmap and the vision is aligned with the business objectives not just for now but in the long term it cannot be that your product is conflicting with what the organization wants in the long run so pivoting and adapting to the strategic vision is absolutely important the next one is user feedback analysis uh, always incorporate any kind of user feedback to identify which features are priority 0 absolutely which are non negotiable priority 1 which are important but can be deprioritized for example in the next 6 to 12 months this is imperative to balance any kind of resource utilization and at the same time ensuring maximum success if if i tell you amazon works on a very customer centric approach and we often prioritize features for example which enhances user experience over a lot of times just driving uh, profitability for example this helps us uh, always go back and pivot our approach whenever required and whenever there is a conflicting view on product development the next one is uh, i want to talk about is uh the data driven approach i think uh one thing that amazon has absolutely taught me is relying on data for 100% of decision making as a product manager data is the coolest tool and absolutely it is a non negotiable tool for developing great products uh as a product manager uh i i and for that matter everyone uh uses and measures success through key metrics which are absolutely business relevant uh for example user engagement tracking any kind of interactions that the users have had uh with your product uh such as time spent on the app or features that were absolutely used or click through rate to gauge is the product actually relevant to the end, end customer the second one can be uh conversion rates for example uh is the product actually resulting in any kind of conversion is it resulting in any kind of sale uh, then a very key important one can be customer satisfaction in this case identifying why the customer is actually using it are they truly happy with the product or not and then the fourth one being retention rate uh, yes the customer can be unhappy but sometimes they don't leave the product retention rate is the key to identify what is that ticking point that the customer refuses to use your product you ideally on a standard basis retention shouldn't be uh, like retention should be less than 2% but uh, and and most customers and most products should not reach to that point but retention rate is still an imperative metric and tracking these metrics not just these but any kind of business relevant metrics are absolutely important to go back and identify if you are going on the right direction or not as a part of the product journey once the product life cycle has started it just doesn't end at launching the product and post launch uh, once the launch has been completed uh, there are multiple techniques for managing the product uh life cycle the first one being sunsetting it is almost like strategically retiring products that are no uh, longer relevant or aligned with the marketing trends or even organizational goals for example um amazon actually discontinued kindle voyage which was an e reader uh in response to changing customer preferences and advancement in the kindle technology 
The second one can be pivoting. Yes, the product can be a successful product at launch, but adapting the product strategy based on market feedback or shift in the industry trend is really important. In case of Amazon, Amazon Echo actually started as a voice activated assistant, which then evolved to evolving like a complete smart home hub uh, as a one uh, spot, one time, one size fits all kind of a product. Uh, the last one is continuous iteration. Implementing any kind of ongoing improvements and updates to enhance product value and competitiveness is an absolute must for long-term success. For example, uh, in case of Amazon, uh, Amazon Prime membership program keeps adding these new features, uh, some kind of new benefits. Uh, there are always, while there is a standalone app, uh, uh, there are, for example, Vine program that got launched or you as, a, as an end customer keep getting uh, better updates on uh, uh, more products to try based on your uh, on, on your purchase history right uh, it is it, it, all of these uh, strategies revolve around uh, developing and evolving products post launch as well uh, i have listed down some key um, uh, resources which can be utilized for uh, enhancing your knowledge uh, not just knowledge but actually skills and and um, uh, un understanding deeper details of product management here uh, thank you so much for your time. If there are any questions, I'm absolutely available. Uh, you can reach out to me on uh, LinkedIn. Thank you so much.